Because I only wear it on Saturdays because it's a nice t-shirt. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you peel it off of him, it'll sound similar to that of Velcro. He's more um, shirt than that. <laughs> And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly Show to cover the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and um, reviews, and whatever the hell else. I couldn't figure out what I was going to do with my hands to say how happy I am to see both of you. <laughs> so, so you just shake your fist. Oh, there they are. I, I forgot. Uh, oh, that reminded me. Hey, man, this week we're going to be talking about Duke 3D. Um, it's getting a fusion, yeah, fusion treatment. I'm, this is going to be a rough one, kids. Buckle up. <laughs> the Sirius M engine, it is interesting. I got to play it, and Valve has announced a new VR headset, and you need to quit laughing, like, for real. Yeah, and just because uh, it's all about Valve, Valve releases some more Vulcan software, so it's another excuse to double down on DX12. And Humble gets a new CEO, so let us tell you all how we're just going to die. Proton gets rebased because Valve throwing some of its toys back into the... Uh, wine pram and Farrell releases dirt 4 for linux a week short of 10 months after it originally came out but hey it's here now <laughs> ladies and gentlemen boys and girls um i'm vince stone that is jordan Sfang, and that is pedro mateus and you are home watching us live <laughs> shot realm dynamic helping us form cocaine voltron before we get started lands what's up in your life what's new what, what's been getting you up in the mornings i don't know pedro go Okay, uh, well, over here, I am basically trying to save as much money as I possibly can, since I most likely will have to buy a new motherboard for when the new Ryzen's come out. It's and better now there's... than uh, moving out of the country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or moving yeah, town. it's... Uh... Well, I moved downtown, but whatever. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, no, apparently there's rumors that uh, the new Ryzen's may come out in May. So. July. Uh, yeah, it's probably going to September. be July, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> January. <laughs> oh, um, man. It, I, I will go ahead and get this one. It is the absolute worst time in the history of ever. To be building a computer. I feel like Jordan felt. I happen to be on Discord. I'm always on, the, but I was paying attention and rereading it. And Jordan types in Discord, you're all welcome. And I was like, yep, you just bought the 1080Ti. This, this is how I feel. It's like, yep, this, this is about to hit me in like three different ways. I'm looking forward to it. On top of that, I beat up a cabinet. Has anybody beat up a cabinet lately? So, so I, I was curious about that. Like, like an arcade cabinet or like a kitchen nope. cabinet? Kitchen cabinet. All right, all right. Yeah, ass. I didn't take issue with my one. furniture. <laughs> um, it didn't stand. Uh, no, I was. Um, I did this before the show on Wednesday. I was repairing a piece of chip tile, like the I have high traffic linoleum in the kitchen because I know I will screw up my hardwood floors. Uh, so I had it out, and I just had a stack of tile from when I did it. And I was like putting it under the molding. Just getting it wedged in there. I guess the tile was old. It was dry or whatever, and it snapped. So all that force, uh, kinetic, boom, and like caved in the cabinet door. So we're shopping for a cabinet door, and of course, it's the bottom cabinets which I refaced. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! How about yeah. you, Jordan? See, I, we were talking a bit about that in the free free super shows, and I'm going to be cutting some very large oh. checks in the near future, and I think I can afford it. I, like, I, I have the money in my bank account, but like, <laughs> hot damn, this, these are these are more numbers that I'm comfortable with distributing. That that's painful. I threw out my painful number, and you're like, oh no, sweetheart. Oh no. no, no. <laughs> oh no, yeah. T take that, multiply that by about 1.5 times. Oh, That's the base yep. cost. <laughs> well, if we're going to be multiplying things, we might as well start with our favorite horse. It's multiplying? I thought we I thought we neutered it so that it wouldn't do that anymore. It's the Steam! It is the update of the week. So many Linux fixes, you guys. Like, they're... Mm -hmm. they're that that article wasn't bullshit. They're they're still they're still pushing out code for Steam VR. Um, there's a lot of fixes uh, for Linux for the Steam VR compositor. Uh, also, USB uh, speeds are a bit of a bottleneck that have been addressed. Also, if you're plugging your Vive and all the attached accoutrement into a USB hub, there was some unacceptable latency that has also been de dealt with. Um, mm -hmm. That that's definitely a thing. I definitely wouldn't have considered that to be an issue, but I guess when you have 
some very <laughs> high bandwidth crap going on, perhaps, yeah, maybe you want to deal with some of the latency issues uh, built into the the platform. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't know, but you, you can, you can try it out if you are one of the three Linux users who own a Vive, um, <laughs> report back to us. Well, one of the things that they did was they actually fixed, uh, asynchronous reprojection if you have an AMD card. NVIDIA cards, they can do that easily enough, but if you had an AMD card in past, you would have to use a patched kernel specifically to enable that. You don't need that anymore. So, that's good. That's very good. <laughs> and they also raised the file cap on the uh, Steam VR compositor to match the system's hard limit on the number of open files that you could have, which is good, and it makes a lot of sense, which then raises the question, why wasn't it a thing from the start? And it's basically my excuse to go, hey, Solus, having a default uh, 8,000 open file uh, default on your installation Say default is not again. a good thing. No, it, it, it's, it's, it's not it's the, good. In the, the age... It's the two greatest words in the English language. Default. Default. In, in, default. In, <laughs> in the age of uh, 12 thread CPUs for under 150 pounds, 8,000 open files will get filled up in two seconds. Do anyway, Higher. <laughs> it's good to see a gang of, gang of fixes. Uh, you know, it's not even VR so much. You got to give Valve credit for sticking with that and still sticking with Linux because when that launched on Linux, it technically was like, you can plug it into a computer. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll yeah, give no, you a it'll, display. It'll, 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 right. yeah, it'll recognize it as a display. There's going to be a cursor. That was pretty much but it. But it's only going to go to like half of it. <laughs> you're, you're gonna get <laughs> but yeah. the main reason, the main reason we say VR is not completely dead because Valve's like, Shut up, Ben. You don't know what you're talking about. Here's our new VR thing. And it looks, well, if we're being honest, it looks small. Very small. It looks like binoculars. Mm -hmm. It also looks kind of cheap. I look at the little slidey thing right there. I'm like, hmm, what's going on? Our technic has got a gang of uh, speculation because there's no fucking info mm -hmm. on this thing. It's called the Valve Index. All this is going to be in our show notes with everything else. May 2019th. Upgrade your experience, Ben. Do you think this is like the 32X for Revive, maybe? <laughs> oh, it's a oh, virtual man, if they, boy, <laughs> dude. If if they do like a Vive Tower power, I want them to slowly start like building out a mech suit, like starting <laughs> with the helmet, it goes on the shoulders and down to the legs, and then all of a sudden you're Iron Man. Um, <sighs> yeah, yeah. The uh, I mean, I mean, so the 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 Valve Consumer Price Index or whatever they're calling it. Uh, you like you you brought up that it looks kind of cheap, but we said that about the Steam controller that it looks kind of cheap and plasticky. It does, and it's a, and mm -hmm. it's but. But the, the, those appearances are deceiving. It's a rugged little piece of kit. It's a so big I, piece of kit. It's a sturdy controller. It exactly. looks bang, a bit bang. cheap, but it's a sturdy controller. Right, right, I'm going right, to put right, mine right. down because <laughs> if you activate these, they will control OBS quite handily. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But but see, there, there, there you go, right? Just because something looks cheap doesn't necessarily mean that the build quality sucks. Mm -hmm. So I'm 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 willing to give Valve a pass on this until we can uh, at least see some units. Um, but it does look like Take Three is going to be like Ben said, it's going to be cheaper, probably a cost-effective VR solution. I wonder how many dozens of units it will sell. Well, what if step one is insert your mobile? I think, I, think, I think Samsung would then like I to have some words. Yeah, Samsung would like a word with you at Dude, that point. Dude, it's going to be the, uh, yeah, Steam VR, not the Gear VR, but the Steamy Gear VR. Atomic, uh, no, I wouldn't, because a lot of things we don't need. What we need for that, what Atomic's asking is like, hey, would you use it for like virtual desktop? Great idea. One, I never want to be in a situation of being filmed where it looks like being face-fucked by a toaster. This is just a smaller, cheaper-looking toaster. Still a toaster. <laughs> But what we got to deal with is resolution because until you're dealing with like genuinely like 4K for each eye, UHD, mm. you're going to have that screen door effect, man. And pushing like dual 4K at 90. That's, that's rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that 2080 Ti better get a lot cheaper very quickly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, though no, I like that Valve didn't really say anything about it. They just put a very dark picture on a page exclusively dedicated to said picture. I know what it is. Page and then a page. it's a keychain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then first thing that uh, people at ours did was like, okay, 
Download the picture, jack up the brightness, jack up the contrast. It's like, oh, now we can see where it ends. It's like, <clears throat> oh, it's being held upside down. And that's the bit that you see in the picture is the one that would end up right down here over uh -huh. your mouth, which is explains why that hole is the microphone. So, yeah, and... They really should have did what Tesla did with a Model Y with that silhouette. When you boosted the brightness in the license plate, it was like, hi. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or just like a little dick butt in the corner. Basically. Okay, yep. wrap your minds around this. You don't... It, it rolls out. Let's say... All right. $300 is just viable. $450. $450 comes with Half-Life VR. New installment. So it's Half-Life 2 VR is what you're saying? No, it's just called Half-Life VR. <laughs> oh, it includes the can, first campaign as well. Only okay. way you can play, listen, while you were over there wondering, like, well, actually, the name should, I'll be fucking playing Gordon Freeman with a fucking crowbar while you're, like, I don't understand the names. <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, see, what, so, what, I, what I was thinking was like uh, like a bisected Gordon Freeman. So you're just playing as his legs. It's Half Life. <laughs> so what's the over and under on you with one of those knuckles playing as Gordon Freeman, swinging the crowbar and smacking the shit out of your monitor? Uh, I'm gonna say 112. Yes. percent <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make it wireless so I can get in dangerous trouble. <laughs> well, th and and that that's the thing too. People have been like saying, "Valve, the vibe's great now, but it's I don't want the umbilical cord tying the back of my head to the matrix." So if this is if this is a is this going to be wireless? B is it going to use the existing lighthouses? Or are you going to have to buy this in addition to a bunch of other hardware? Mm -hmm. All unanswered questions that a jacked up contrast image will not provide. So all we no. have left to do is speculate. <laughs> What's the thing? One of the things that is making VR possible on Linux is Vulkan. Yes. Oh yeah. And per perhaps you are having a bit of a rough, rough time debugging some of your Vulkan applications. Maybe you need some sort of serialization format to enable it to be moved from memory regions to memory regions. Valve's got you. This is fossilized. Um, a serialization format. Uh, it can do a couple other things too. Like it can dynamically record um, the Vulcan runtime for playback, um, and it can also be used to um, essentially essentially build up caches of objects that you can distribute alongside games. So that you know, if you're using OpenGL for your VR application for whatever reason, or if you're um, or if if you just have a lot of shaders that need to be compiled, you can pre-compile them. You yep. can you can ship them with your game, which is a good thing. Um, it support at the at the moment you're you're it works with the uh, Clang GC four eight and uh, Microsoft some Tinker Toy compiler. Uh, they they give you they give you a couple code examples and it's there for you to ingest in your project if you so want it. Yeah, and they also they made it very clear that you can specify what kind of cache you can create with this. Like say you're looking to diminish those um, load times to as small as they can be and getting that cache to reliably ship with the game to the point where regardless of hardware that's being run on the local machine whatever the player might be using getting that to work so even if you're just shipping really basic assets just enough to cut down that loading time by a significant margin that's very good we've seen games time and time again that take minutes to compile stuff one Overgrowth. of the things we were talking about in the pre super shows then <laughs> was um, I posted a thing earlier from GDC where Ubisoft went out on stage and they were talking about working with Vulcan with Project Stadia from Google. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of interesting behind the scenes with what they've learned because they did the latest Assassins, whatever it was, with DX12. I'm like, hey, we built these tools to get off DX12 to Vulcan and all that. The only reason I'm bringing this up because I want everyone to go, grr was they're like, okay, so we built it for Stadia. It works, but why not build a local copy too? So everyone, the latest Assassin's Creed, somewhere inside of Ubisoft, there is a native Linux version that runs Vulkan. It's kind of brilliant. Yeah, it would be... Uh, well, Jordan died. Uh, <laughs> womp, womp. It would be really nice if they actually uh, brought 
that Blitix version, what they did, it won't happen. out nope. for public. Yeah, no, Never. it won't happen. <laughs> Never. But that's now we have exactly the answer that we need. It's like, why aren't people developing games for Linux? Because no one's throwing money at them like Google did for Ubisoft. <laughs> or, or how Microsoft basically bought out the entire game development education system. They're like, hey, you're going to teach these children how to use DirectX, and they're not going to know mm -hmm. anything else. And then those kids are going to be trying to get jobs, and they're like, uh, what do you know? I know all the Xs. I'm like, uh, do, do you know anything that can be used somewhere outside of Windows 10? Uh, I, I know Visual Studio. Oh, Visual Studio Code. Yeah, you can run that as a snap. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> all right. Uh, big update. Proton 4.2. Oh, yes. So uh, one of my many, many requests is that uh, Proton rebase itself uh, to Wine 4.2. And I guess someone at Valve or one of the 4.0 versions uh, and someone at Valve may have been listening or they were already working on it. Most likely. More water. likely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's here. It's finally out. It includes the XVK 1.0.1. Uh, uh, AF Audio has been updated to the March 19th uh, Git snapshot, which is the one you should be getting. Uh, the They improved mouse cursor movements in Resident Evil 2 and Devil May Cry 5, and they improved mouse capture in a lot of uh, GDI-based games. Fallout 4 being an example, uh, you no longer need the uh, virtual uh, desktop for the game to figure out what the region is that it's supposed to capture the mouse on. It works properly now, so that's good. Uh, they also have a better IVR input for VR input. And they have further improved and new uh, further improvements and new features for the easy path if you're trying to build Proton yourself. So if you don't want to actually dig in and make the necessary changes for something that you want to do, the easy path will now actually help you along the way. So just type "make help" and it'll so, pop up. So 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 it's it's the Valve Easy Bake Vulcan then. Yep, <laughs> and it's you know. Mouse fixes, games that relied on you play now actually start properly, the crew. Uh, Vulkan 1.1 support because it exposes Vulkan 1.1 to running applications. I was going to complain about the still lacking easy anti-cheat support, but Paladins is working over Proton again, so... I'm good. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're so good. So happy about that, you heathen. Like, oh my god. Yeah. Free to play, well, man. <laughs> well, so so here, here's here's the biggest thing about this is that Valve um Valve has upstreamed quite a bit. Um I th I think I think the ending number was like um they're down to a 214 patch delta from base wine now. They contributed about uh, 166 patches upstream. Which is really, really good. Um, it's it's nice to see when uh, large companies do that canonical. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, we're we're gonna, we're gonna be talking about the uh, the consequences of that in the news segment. But it deserves to be called out that Val Valve has realized that if they're going to be basing what they do off of open source projects, it behooves them to improve said projects so they have a better base to build off of. Um, I think that's pretty neat. I, I mean, I'm glad they're getting this work. The couple of things mm -hmm. I tried with it, uh, with the Uplay stuff, the um, Assassins, the, one Great of the Assassins, I get like a chunk of those games in some bundle. And the one that worked with Uplay works. Yep. That one. Odyssey just works. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good. Uh, everything seems to be running fine. It does really feel to me that... Okay, like seriously, when when this first came out, I think we all felt like, yeah, let's see if they stick with us for more than a month. Mm -hmm. Then we find and now out. I, I'm just happy it's there. <laughs> well, later we found out because initially no one knew, and then oh, they were bankrolling DXVK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like how? Oh. And they're continuing to hire people to work on this, and they're upstreaming changes. We're going to talk about. Code Weavers, um, their thoughts on this in the news segment. It really does seem like part of Valve's strategy is to turn Linux, the Linux ecosystem, the Proton button, is going to become the fuck it button. I can run anything. Oh. 
Oh yeah, no, they they are one. I've, I've said it before. They are 100 percent trying to make their own windows, the blackjack and hookers, and mm. so far they're doing a decent <laughs> job. Um, yeah, we well, think they, this they, time last year. Now, I'm leading the charge with let's get native games before anything else. This is what we're talking back library right now, mm-hmm. but just the ability to what do you what would you say? There's like a 70 percent chance it's just going to work. Hmm. Unless well. it has some weird right. uh, uh, anti-cheat software, those still don't work. But hey, Valve is throwing money at that They're problem as well. So, <laughs> I, 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 and again, I've, I've brought this up before, but the decoupling of DXVK allows them to support a lot of newer games faster than it would take to actually get Y into a state where it will support them as well. Uh, yep. So, mm-hmm. so uh, now, now Valve sort of has. Their stable base in line, and then the fucky shit they're doing in DXVK, D3, D12, or whatever, uh, or D3, DVK, and hopefully, hopefully, this will stabilize enough to to the point where they can basically say like, "Hey, man, your games will just run." Period. It doesn't it doesn't matter what platform you buy them on; you will be able to play them. That would be the dream. And if you're looking for man, there used to be a site where you could track stuff and look at players. That's gone, man. That's all Epic's business now. Play Tracker <laughs> has shown up to fill those shoe organs. View stats, graphs on Steam. Find out how many people own a game, how many are actively playing it, how it's fired over the years, and more. All free, no strings attached. Pretty good selling thing. You know, It outside of the grossly inflated player counts, this seems like a pretty legit site, and it's brand new and so one guy put it together because he thought it needed to exist and i'm down with that yeah you know yeah i, I mean if you go to the about page you the 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 verbatim quote is play tracker insight gathers public data from gamers <laughs> around the world in a random sample and extrapolates that d- data to estimate total values so gotcha bullshit complete another bullshit um you can you can you can try to you can try to make a mathematical model that will sort of attempt to emulate real life people's buying patterns and playing patterns, but it's not going to work particularly well. <laughs> uh, vendetta, vendetta, no. vendetta, <laughs> vendetta, vendetta. Two T's. <laughs> yeah, it's it, they have pretty graphics. Uh, I had a look through uh, like Counter Strike Global Offensive and. Um, couple of the the other games i have yeah the graphics are pretty it's just uh yeah it, it they 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 don't have you're, you're, actual dude, numbers vendetta curse of the ravens <laughs> cry crushed it on march 29th six players <laughs> who was playing it yesterday damn the developers <laughs> i don't that that's giving them way too much credit pedro I don't think they have enough 780s no, 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 no. to go around. Jordan, Jordan, here's the thing. They have the right hardware. They're just not using it right. <laughs> listen, listen, man. Have you tried to buy a 780 these days? It's it's not easy. It, I don't I don't believe they have enough. I tried really at one of the things. I downloaded the game when I got the uh, 2060. It's like, all right, RTX on, baby. RTX Ravens. It just crashed. And I was like, you know what? I don't care enough to even figure out what went man. wrong fuck this game man wouldn't wouldn't it be great if you were getting like 90 fps on that and all of a sudden it just runs beautifully oh uhd <laughs> it's like oh oh really oh okay, okay. so this is the video card that they were using okay clearly the, the one that didn't exist at the time of development uh-huh. <laughs> all right well Tang- tangle deep has a new version out uh the 1.24 patch is available you can well it's already if you have the game, it's downloaded because that's how Steam works, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. They uh, <laughs> uh, so the 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 big thing here is that they added a secondary configuration file uh, located next to where your prefs usually are, uh, because they're going to be implementing some uh, features that they want you to be able to turn on and play with, but they haven't impl- they haven't created a menu for it yet, so you're gonna have to go turn those on manually. Um, they also have a bunch of uh, patch notes here for uh, fixes, quality of life stuff. One thing that stood out for me is they attempted for a rare pet breeding bug that sometimes <laughs> caused pairing to not work. And I'm like, man, don't try and force it. These things just don't work out sometimes, right? You just, you yeah. just gotta, you, you, you can't, you can't try and make relationships work. Sometimes, sometimes they just are doomed to fail. <laughs> But uh, I'm glad they're sticking with the uh, Tangle Deep because it's a really nice roguelike. As traditional roguelikes go, this one is a very nice one. And it's 
yeah i'm actually really glad that they're still improving they introduced a um speedrunner mode which basically skips all of the dialogue and cutscenes and everything else so i look forward to seeing it on awesome games and quick at some time in the future <laughs> possibly um up next serious m fusion 2017 beta that's a great thing that's crow team put everything over on the vulcan sauce being awesome no, there's a Duke 3D. It's like the first four levels faithfully recreated. And it's there. It's workshop. You can put it in. It launches. You don't have to do anything with like, um, you know, capitalization and file names. I mean, out of the box. You get the Hollywood Holocaust, uh, Red Light District, Death Row, Toxic Dumb. And, and the network script resources level. Yeah. Well, the reason you need that <laughs> is because it supports co-op multiplayer. Ooh. That's good. Yeah, that, that yeah. that's very good. We <laughs> might be throwing a little bit of that this upcoming Friday. We got a couple of ideas for this upcoming. Uh, go back and watch. We did Unreal Tournament 1999 last night. That's on a YouTube channel. And I was like, I wonder if this is still. It's still fun. We had a gang of people to play some CF and all that. But this will be uh, old school. It's very well done. When I, if I'd shown anyone this and I didn't mention that it was a workshop mod, you'd be like, oh man, somebody put some time into this, which they did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> better, better, better time spent than Duke Nukem forever, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this, um, this, will, this will also support uh, VR apparently under Linux because it's built on the Sirius engine and that is one of the two engines under Linux that will actually do VR stuff. Um, and my, my, my whole thing is if you can't like take your VR controller and stick it next to your head and smoke your cigar, this will be an entirely colossal waste of time. Brilliant. Get some... Coming up next, Left 4 Dead 2. <laughs> they have fixed a server exploit and uh, fixed a lobby chat message not appearing on Linux. Woohoo! Wait, yeah. wait, wait. wait. So, so, so you weren't getting my shit posts in the lobby chat when we were doing Left 4 Brad? My, no, my because life. you were it's screaming feel, into my wasted. ears, you heathen. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, I wasn't paying attention to the lobby. Does anyone pay Pedro attention to the lobby? Read. <laughs> no, it's just a thing because unless you're playing with randos, yes, Pedro. And... Adult literacy is a thing. I mean, if I've been trying, do, do we need to have to talk now? I wrote shit in the show notes. Come on, man. <laughs> Nori texted me last night and said it's getting old. You know. <laughs> 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 what, 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 what? So she's like his stenographer now? Pretty much. <laughs> All right. But yeah, no, I'm, I, it's good to see that uh, it's still uh, getting a bit of work put into it and might as well, you know, given that the original Left 4 Dead developers are making a new game. I guess it wouldn't have killed Valve if they'd given them some money. It's like, yeah, call that uh, Left 4 Dead 3. Although those were the same people behind Evolve. So I can see why they wouldn't want to as well. So I All got right. a little bit of a cognitive dissonance going here. <laughs> What's up next? Well, up next, it's not we it's have... not going free to play. Yeah, it is. No, 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 yes, yet. it is. <laughs> no, it's not. It's never. It's never. Not just yet, anyway. But uh, artifact is uh, being put on hold they're not going to be releasing updates like they said that they were going to <laughs> and they're going to take a step back their words and reassess things because and this is one of my uh favorite sentences uh, obviously things didn't turn out how we how we hoped artifact represents the largest discrepancy between our expectations for how one of our games would be received and the actual outcome you released something that wasn't Half-Life 3, that wasn't Left 4 Dead 3, that wasn't Team Fortress 3, it wasn't Portal 3. What Dota did you 3, expect? Ricochet 2, <laughs> Blue Opposing Force. They publicly... All right, first off, congratulations, Wars to Valve. You communicated with the public. Good on you, little buddy. Um... However, that communication was, we're not actively going to be working on this. This is a tap dance. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're giving this the Half-Life 2 Episode 3 treatment of like, it'll be ready when it's ready, which means it's going to get dissolved into the flat uh, management structure known as Valve. 
because it's no longer a game studio. I mean, nobody interested in making games. I know I've said this before on the show, but in case you're new, anybody interested in making games is not looking for a job at Valve. They didn't buy Campo Santo because people were knocking down the doors with game ideas there. Okay, mm-hmm. just something to think about. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's a triple A grade card game with an upfront fee that completely missed the mark. Uh, I like card games. I was the target audience here. I played Magic the Gathering. I like Hearthstone. Well, until it became a pay to win mess, but uh, it. I don't know. I, I don't know how they could have missed the mark so much and they, they, they were they were trying to compete with free that 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 is that is the main downfall of artifact is that heart their their main competitor um their main competitors hearthstone and magic the gathering arena both offered free to play yeah. options and these guys did not and you can have the best product in the world but if it's not at that price point that people are willing to consume based on what they've already consumed, it doesn't matter how good your thing is. If people assume that a given thing should be worth a certain amount, that's more or less what they're going to be willing to pay. And Valve didn't listen. And now... Well, you got to think some type waste, of like marketing and research of... and thought went into... Like, with <laughs> what, like your sorry, social... mar- marketing? Valve? Really? Yes, <laughs> really. No, you... Research. Yes. It's, it's going to make sense so when much. I finish the fucking sentence, ladies and gentlemen. Just... <laughs> I, l- let them get it out of their system. I only was trying to talk. Um, they were writing that social credit for a long time, though. You got to think about it. Like with Half Life, Half Life Two, and rolling that, Valve could have basically released fucking anything, and people were like, "Oh, this is great." This is from creators Half Life Two. That credit's been burned. You can't release something and it be bought on any goodwill at this point. So I don't think anybody had like, "Oh, I'll just buy it." Because, hey, Valve makes good games. I think a lot of the kids are like, Valve makes games? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, Wait, I, did I, I mean, Valve I've... get bought by Steam or something? Or what? <laughs> well, don't, 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 don't worry. Uh, auto, auto Chess will save them. Auto free chess DLC. Will save everyone. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, free DLC for Dead Cells. Uh, we threw chairs at it not too long ago. Uh, it's uh, like a 2D action platformer with roguelite elements and basically this new uh content release introduces a big new boss it's a giant that everyone can see in the uh, little gift there do you, do you get a uh, pet they... owl Hedwig. I... <laughs> no, do you get a pet owl as he says referring to the fucking owl in the picture Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get pets. Uh, pets are one of the things. Actually, pets were already in the game. They just expanded on their uh, functionality. Uh, you also have uh, the... Uh, you have 10 new weapons. Uh, there's a couple of uh, specific item changes. They made that little picture there to uh, announce that they totally have this battle royale mode with a machine gun <laughs> and a you, frying You pan. are glossing <laughs> over things. It's called the <laughs> co-op royale battle of the bush mode giggity. Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that's just a joke screenshot. They say as much, but it is... It is a, an awesome uh, bunch of new content, and these guys, they made a good game. Except for the technical side of things, because it still doesn't work properly on SteamOS. No, what, you mean, oh, like, oh, crashing oh. the overlay when you start it? No, nah, it's not. It's a little, a little <laughs> I, I mean, who, on SteamOS, do, it doesn't do, even do, show the video. Oh, well, there's that. <laughs> that, that I, yeah. I mean, well, that, 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 that's, what, that's what you get for using SteamOS as, mm-hmm. as, I don't know, a Steam <laughs> game. Um, yeah, well, it, the, the, they're planning to add a bunch more free DLC, so it looks like they're kind of trying to take the Team Cherry approach of just dumping stuff in the game until... It becomes very, very difficult to not buy it because look at all this additional stuff you got on top of the base game. Uh, they have a they have a skinning system as well. Uh, you can skin creatures alive. That's that's pretty mm-hmm. cool. I'm and where are their skins? <laughs> Just like in real life. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, they're uh, so they 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 set out the roadmap in the article. They want to build out their team. They want to add more content. And uh, they're they're gonna be focusing on trying to shore up uh, the deficiencies of Dead Cells and hopefully make it a better game, which mm-hmm. I, I mean I hope works out for them. I hope, mm-hmm. I'm curious to see what these guys are gonna come out with next. Maybe Dead Cells Two, maybe something else. 
All right. Uh, we had a new offer. Um, a developer reached out and they're like, hey, man, would you like to take a look at our game? Hey, man, hey man would you like to log into Steam a second time through your browser? <laughs> um, that, that, that's, click that's, through that's, seven different pages? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Sym Symphony of the Stars. It's an early access. It's going to be a, a 6DOF uh, shooter game uh, with some uh, with some strategy elements, I suppose. Um, it's going to support VR two, um, and if you if you scroll down to the system specs, uh, they recommend uh, the GTX nine seventy for VR. So I guess VR mode doesn't actually use more than three and a half gigs of VRAM, which is an interesting <laughs> technical detail. Um, yeah, uh, you uh, you're you're supposed to uh, either try to free the solar system or conquer it. I don't know. This this seems like something that. Um, would really benefit from having multiplayer. Lo and behold, it has online cross-platform multiplayer. So mm -hmm. it might actually mm -hmm. be worth a look. And it's priced to sell at three bucks. So worst yeah. case scenario, we will definitely give it a try. Give it a shot. It could be a thing. Pedro, we do we kind of buried the good big happy news, that big game that came out this week. Yeah, that big game that the people who actually wanted to play it on Linux already were playing it with Proton. But hey, it's Dirt 4! Uh, Feral's most recent port, and yes, I am actually happy, very, very, very happy to report that the uh, work that Feral put into Dirt 4 paid off considerably because at UHD over here with the 1600 uh, Ryzen and the GTX 1080, at UHD with Proton, uh, it still reports around 40 FPS, but the frame, like the frame skipping and the micro stutter is just horrible and it's absolutely unplayable. But with Feral's port, the frame time is a hell of a lot smoother and it actually holds between 40 and 50 FPS. So yes, the Linux version is superior to the Protons. Good job, it's Feral. It's about time. Very good job. <laughs> It does yeah. require <laughs> Vulcan. Um, this is going to run yeah, at fifty nine ninety nine, <laughs> and this is a dirt game, so it always comes in at the review of mix to either negative. Yeah, you're you're you're, yes. you're either you're either all about this game or you fucking hate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. When they released this game, uh, they were kind of banking on the good publicity that they got from Dirt Rally, and people were like, "Ooh, more Dirt Rally, great!" And they played it and went. Oh, this is not Dirt Rally. This is going back to, like, the other Dirts that no one really liked very much. Okay, bye. And now they release Dirt 2. That would have been nice, Feral. Yeah, one of the only things I'm, I'm a little bit worried about <laughs> is, I mean, we're going to see IRL. And it was like, no talks, no box. And people um, say that little mantra when they, you know, typed from their Windows 7 box. Um Feral will get some real numbers on something that has been out technically playable with Proton and a lot of people might have already bought it and they're like, hey, now I have a better version on Linux as opposed to mm -hmm. waiting. Now, admittedly, <laughs> me personally, I've not bought the game for myself. I, I could give negative four fucks about Dirt Rally. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the new Tomb Raider. I'm not, you know, even though it's playable right now with Proton, I want to give Feral a little bit of change for it. But this, um, I'm glad it works well. It works well with Vulcan, and Pedro seems reasonably content with it. I'm surprised it didn't I, perform I a little bit better with a 1080 at UHD. <laughs> uh, UHD with everything on Ultra, that, that, that's a 2018 game. Yeah, it, it's demanding. <laughs> yeah, but have you looked at it? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, I don't know why it's so demanding, but it's demanding. <laughs> Right on, right on. Get us out of here, Jordan, if your internet All right, up long coming enough. up next. Are you tired of hearing us talk about Valve and Proton? Well, stay tuned, because we're about to talk about Valve and Proton, but from Codeweaver's perspective. Well, it's uh, that was a long Steam segment, and before we so get to long. the also not very long uh, news segment, we would like to take a bit of a break to think Hugh, not you, the, that one over there, the pretty one. Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, Hang on. I know you're not pointing at me, but I, I want to speak on behalf of the audience. You are the pretty one. That's yeah, sad. Yeah, let's face it. It's true, but it's sad. <laughs> um, are you determined to wear that shirt every show this month? 
Because you did it. I think he's I just might. forgotten how to do laundry. <laughs> I, That's I, the I, thing. I, this shirt was washed. I only wear it on Saturdays because it's a nice t-shirt. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you peel it off of him, it'll sound similar to that of Velcro. He's more shirt uh, than man. <laughs> if Look, listen, if, listen, we, 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 got, we got something for you if you want to be more shirt than man, but we got to get to that first. We got <laughs> okay. to thank all the lovely people who are supporting the show, including the Patreons, like Belkirk, Belrick. I was about, I kept telling myself, not Belkirk, Dude. Belrick, and then I fucking said Belkirk. Belrick, I am sorry for that, but I've done it too. Just reading. It's yeah. like, oh, Bel-. I'm just like, no, Bel- yeah, Bel- Belkirk. Belkirk. Okay. And I, yeah, I was telling myself, it's not fucking Belkirk, and then I fucking said it. Calm because- down, Spock. <laughs> I'm, I'm no, no. I'm very angry because that of my Vulcan emotions. <laughs> my Vulcan emotions are out of control. Yeah, this is um, in the early years yeah. trying to do the um. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a visual gag. I apologize, audio listeners. Yeah. Any, any, anyways. Uh, thank You're you, to me, patrons, inclu- including <laughs> Belric. Um, but if you patrons, the best way to support us because you get all sorts of cool stuff. Keeping it ad uh, free. Yeah, oh, yeah. ad free. Uh, you can also head on over to our uh, our uh, support page. Uh, you can click on that link at linuxgamecast.com. We got all sorts of lovely other links for you to click, like um, humble partner links if you want to buy games and give money to charity, which apparently is the thing that we do. Uh, if you want to buy some stuff off our Amazon wish list to be one of Frank's fuck buddies, that'd be pretty cool. Or uh, just give us some Bitcoin because we're all about that Bitcoin. Bitcoin's um, dead. Got- Get rid of it. Yeah, yeah, give it to us. Um, we we also uh we we also got a we also got a store, uh, store at yeah, com. So, like I was saying, if you want to be more shirt than man, you can buy one of these shirts. I, and... I, after the show, I'm going to buy Pedro a new T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and and then he's just gonna come up. He's gonna show up next week not wearing a shirt. But if you want to cover your shame, you can head on over to store that Buy a Hulk shirt. You'll confuse people, especially if you buy the pink one. <laughs> not know what the hell's going on. <laughs> what the hell, Elks? What the hell, Elks, indeed. All right, people, um, people. Indeed. Let's get into the let's news. Let's bring, let's bring them. And uh, yeah, so since we haven't talked about Valve at all during the uh, Steam segment, let's talk about Valve now because uh, Code Weavers have a uh, bit of a post uh, saying how Proton helped improve Wine 4.2. And it's basically a breakdown of uh, what Valve already mentioned in the um, release notes for Proton 4.2. And they actually break it all down it's like every single patch that uh wine 316 had that wasn't present uh that uh, proton 316 had that wasn't uh present in that same version of wine it's basically been contributed back and everything else that uh is not uh present in wine 4.2 like the proton specific stuff that wasn't there already that is also described in that post and that is amazing. It's like, in contributing uh, Proton-specific code upstream, it improves the experience for anyone using just regular wine. And in contributing code upstream, like any code at all, your end product will end up better because as those other features that you're working towards are being worked on by other people off of what you already provided upstream... No, 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 no. Pedro, 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 Pedro. (laughs) You have to ensure that no source code is contaminated (laughs) by outside (laughs) forces. You have to develop everything in a sealed, hermetically sealed room with people wearing freaking, like, dander and bacterial suits or whatever the fuck those things are called um i was going to say laser beams but then i was like no that's a reality show i wanted to develop no 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 let jordan finish his uh gimp suit description there Uh, i'm into it i mean if 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 you wear gimp suits into clean rooms it's not a very clean room it's a very dirty room did you you imagine man there's like that one room at intel and you're like oh bunny suit bunny suit oh don't go in there why not oh oh no no that that, 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 there's literally like the one section of the intel office where they have all their furry employees and they just let them frolic i mean as 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 long as they're hitting their deliverables Listen, listen, as long as they're hitting their deliverables, they don't care, right? As long as as long as you show up and get your work done, you can dress up as a fucking stuffed animal and do whatever you want. Um, yeah. But yeah, this is this is the other side of the coin from uh, the story in the Steam News segment where uh, Valve was like, yeah, no, th- this, this, is, this is great because now it makes it easier to develop Proton. And Wine's like, yeah, it's great because now we get all this stuff that Valve developed uh, and we can 
you know, build new features on it and improve things. So, mm -hmm. su 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 surprise, surprise, right? Like, who, who'd have thought open source development works? I like that who'd they came up it? with this. I like that they put this out there because it's not constant, but I've seen more than once. Valve's just running in and taking all the work that's been done with wines. Like, nay. No, they're... There it is. Yeah, they're yeah. helping. <laughs> that, that, that's the thing. That, Valve has been pretty good with upstreaming shit. They've upstreamed stuff to Debian too. So right. Yep. Like they're 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 not taking the way that a lot of people do with open source projects. And I think that's especially for a large company like Valve that doesn't have to do that. The fact mm -hmm. that they are is noteworthy. It's commendable. It is kind of brilliant. All right, uh, yep. controller boy, tell us about your Pi projects. Well, uh, currently my pipe project's a bit on hold because I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. But uh, there is someone else who was very much sure about what they were going to do with their pie project. And they basically took Raspberry Pi, put a fancy little hat on it with some uh, buttons, and they built a controller. And you can build this with uh, any of the currently available pies but they actually recommend that you use a pi zero because it's teeny tinier so it'll fit the controller much better and there is a pre-built version of the controller that you can buy but this article also gives you everything and i do mean everything software and hardware wise that you will need to build your own so good on them it's uh yeah, bit of a not so rare uh, LWDW crossover here. It's the slice of a piece <laughs> of shit. <laughs> you know, if, if I'd ran into that laying on a desk, I would confuse it with a gang of things before I would get around to saying controller. <laughs> yeah, no, it yeah. doesn't look like a game controller at all. Well, at all? That, that, well I mean, that, 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 that's quite honestly because like they're capless buttons, right? You just get the <laughs> you just get the little contacty boos. Um, it's it's it, it's it's a cool little project. It's it's nice to see that um, people are determined to make open source areola. This is what I want to see. I want to see like someone make a Steam controller out of this. So you can <laughs> well, you they can, do like, have the expansion ports that you could plug other stuff into. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 possible. I I, I want to see some like horrific chimera of like a controller <laughs> built on one of these things. It looks it looks like one of the things from Alien Resurrection. That's like kill me. We, we kill get our pies me. together and we say goodbye, Nintendo Power Pad. Hello, Nintendo Shower Pad. <laughs> but the important thing is that it's probably supported under SDL two, so it'll just work. For it's gonna be brilliant games. if you survive. Yeah. Open Morrowind. They're back. Yeah. They, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, not zero or not forty five zero uh, is the latest release. Came out on the twenty eighth. Um, they're 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 getting they're getting close. Um, shadows are not implemented yet. They said in the last update that um they were making that their MVP because um that was one of the main last things that needed to be implemented after moving from uh, Ogre to open the scene graph. Uh, but it's still they're still working on. If if you go if you actually go through this change set, there are. Again, it's very, very specific bug fixes. I mm -hmm. want to say that they're getting very, very close to being able to, like, come out with this and say, like, this will, with within reason, this is a drop-in replacement for Morrowind. You can just stop playing Morrowind, start using OpenMW, and you will lose nothing. Uh, that's that's ultimately yeah. what I like to see. Um, I, and of course, you know, they have they have their online initiative, and they're trying to get all the other um, game Brio engines working, but. It, it, hopefully, hopefully, uh, sometime this year we'll actually see a finalized product. Um, though I do wonder what the MVPs are after uh, after the shadow issue gets fixed. Maybe, maybe Zathras. Yeah, no, us. the I shadows know, Zathras, are what do you still think? the big one. <laughs> it's yeah, it's just little quality of life things, and that's great. That's actually really great. So yeah, please get the shadows in. <laughs> it's come so far. <laughs> since i remember the first time like i even like made a video on how to install and kind of hack this thing together to make it kind of run and you had a static character that floated around in the outlines of what might be considered morrowind if you used your imagination <laughs> it's it, pretty much a playable game now and we still need those shadows but Good work, good work. I can't wait for a bow to be put on this because, as we say every single time, wire open Skyrim. 
<laughs> they, they, they need to kill this one off first before they can do open Skyrim. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. All right. <laughs> X-Ray 16. Open X-Ray is a 1.6 engine implementation used in Stalker. Call of Pripyat. Pripyat. Yeah, man. Yes. Pedro, you've played this nonsense uh, on your Tuesday stream at one point, didn't you? Yeah, I played uh, Shadow of Chernobyl. The Call of Pripyat Chernobyl. engine is actually... Chernobyl, yes. Chernobyl. Chernobyl. It's like Chernobyl. Chernobyl it's it, novel. It, oh, it's <laughs> kind of like a knockoff version of Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Look, tomato, tomato. Uh, you say tomato, I yeah. say tomato. I got it. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, the version in Call of Pripyat is slightly different than the one that they used for the first two games of the Stalker series. So, yeah, it's very good to see. And actually getting the files from the first two games to work on this, which they are doing, will be very, very welcome because... Well, the Windows version runs fine through Proton with all of the bugs that it's always had because that was a buggy-ass game. It's a very good game. It's a very atmospheric game. And you were correct. This game it, is it's... known for its bugs. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's a buggy mess. You think Bethesda's buggy? Bethesda was taking cues from these guys. <laughs> what about an Ubisoft <laughs> Assassin's Creed game? If you're playing that through Proton, do you even bother trying to figure out what's actually bugged Proton? Or <laughs> No, no d d d don't, don't worry. Stadia will introduce a whole new set of bugs for you to deal with. Yeah. Um, so so there, there's a bit of contention about the, the um, source of this code, as it were. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a bit of a license here. Uh, it is a property of GSC game world. Um, mm -hmm. there's a BSD style license in here that says you can basically, uh, distribute binaries or source code as is, but that's about it. Um, so I, I found, I found a, I found a boiling steam interview where this guy was basically saying like, yeah, someone posted a leaked version of this, uh, code, mm -hmm. um, and they put it up there. So I don't know if they're actually like putting in an effort to remove, like the proprietary code and replace it with some clean room implemented ones or clean room implemented code. Uh, they did add an OpenGL renderer for, and it does. Man, so I tried building this under Linux, right? Mm -hmm. It is a, mm -hmm. so it has a fuck ton of Git sub modules. So that took a while to check out and then it has to build them all. The build process took about 20 minutes and then it failed. Um, yeah. Though it looks, though it looks like the, that's actually just a, like a C header issue that someone called the function incorrectly. And I didn't feel like, sorting that out and submitting a patch because I'm lazy. Um <laughs> but um it it def it runs CMake so it definitely gets to the point. They actually give you some uh they actually give you some Fedora build instructions which is nice. They just give Ubuntu and Fedora. But um yeah. Uh there the, uh, there, there there's also some issue with getting the game files via Wine through Steam. Uh, yep. but they make that fairly clear in the documentation. I'm not going to read things for you. That's not my job unless you pay us, <laughs> uh, like at least, at least $50 a month or $50 a week on the Patreon. Then we will read for you. Um, uh, we'll, 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 Jordan will read you a bedtime story. The views and hey, no. opinions expressed by one Jordan Swing are those of Jordan Swing. No, no, no. I'm just going to make Pedro do it. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. No, 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 no. An I, entire I, I series, don't need luck. An entire series of you reading licenses, open source licenses. It'll be really <laughs> bedtime stories. Bedtime yeah, license yes. with Jordan. Right, right, right. And and and, and there, there there's um and in, in inside that room there's like a bulletproof glass bubble with like someone in the middle and like a pan gun with We're one bullet inside. Call it license to bore. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I'll do I'll do it in a devil costume, just like Richard Stallman wants me to. Um, Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, humble humble bundle. They are getting a brand new CEO. Shiny um, new. Yeah. Um, so uh, Jeffrey Rosen and John Graham have stepped down um, from their CEO and CEO roles, respectively. Uh, and the reasoning behind it is just both of them, you know, that were working on this for ten years. It got to a pretty decent place, and now they want to do something else. Which I, I mean, I, I, I do that with my jobs. I work there until I get sick of it, and then I go and want to do something else. Seems fairly legit. Mm -hmm. um, their replacement, though, is interesting. Um, their replacement is a dude by the name of uh, Alan Patmore. Um, and he has, uh, he has a bit of an interesting CV. He did project management at Double Fine, you know, that company known <laughs> for delivering on time and under budget. Um, uh huh. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, 
a vice president of product development. Uh, before that, he worked. I honestly got to think project management at Double Fine is more of a vanity <laughs> title, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you do? Nothing. Yeah. I went there and they paid me a check. <laughs> you know, it's like a doctorate from university that they just give you. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like a DeVry <laughs> diploma. It's like, oh, that's cute. You actually showed up. <laughs> Yeah, he also worked at Kixai, and he was the studio general manager at Zynga. If you've ever played an Android game, chances are you've seen that logo pop up a couple of times. And to be fair, uh, according to the very shallow Google search I did, uh, the scummy behavior from Zynga seemed to have started mostly after he left. So if that particular timeline checks up, it's probably... Good for a humble, I guess. Speculation. <laughs> I don't know. Aren't we supposed to like freak out and inform everyone that humble is, in fact, indeed, one hundred percent about to implode? Blamo and well, someone someone's gonna Twitch clip that, that and they'll say that we did. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, that that that, do, that doesn't not for going us. anywhere. In. Coming up next, game of the year twenty whatever the fuck year it was when it came out. We're, we're we're throwing chairs at Undertale finally. Woo! Welcome back to the Chairquisition. This time we've been thrown inside a volcano, and we have to find out if that volcano will survive the trial by Fedora. So listen to Buntu. Then we can ask, was it fun? This week, we're taking a look at Undertale, you know, falling down a mountain, fight, meeting monsters. Developed by Toby Fox, done on Game Maker Studio. You can pick it up for about 10 bucks. What is it? Undertale! The RPG where you don't have to destroy anyone. But you will anyways. Um, yeah, let's get right into it. Ven, how did this thing run on Ubuntu? Amazingly, man. I, I was really surprised this box was able to handle this graphical um, juggernaut <laughs> of a game. That, that box right now is a 1700. Powered by a 2080 with 16 gigajoules of RAM, NVMe drive, all that fun stuff. Running the Humbuntu 1810 this week. Didn't have any issues with it. However, when it does launch, it will launch between the two UHD monitors right in the middle and a little fuck you size window every single time. Not a big fan of that. However, if you mash the function keys, one of those causes it to full screen. I don't know which one because I just hammer on it until it gets big. F4. Ah. Yeah. Clever. <laughs> ah. Performance, it was running at 30 or 60 or whatever it is at. I mean, it's an extra pixel. I didn't really pay attention to it. Controllers, however, I did have a little bit of an issue with. I did, because controller supported Linux doesn't exist. It's not a thing. It is under Windows, so I tried it with Proton, and it kind of worked. I mean, I could move sometimes, but whatever. I think this was meant to be played with a keyboard, and I didn't like playing it with a keyboard, so I'm kind of knock at a chair for that nonsense this is something i'd like to sit back and play uh yeah yeah um it doesn't on the fedora 2864 bit with the i7 6700k and the gtx 1080 ti it doesn't launch smack dab in the middle of the two uhd monitors but it does it's one in an itty bitty window you got a mash f4 uh in order to make that full screen so you can actually you know read what's going on in this text-based game um performance it holds 30 because according to steam overlay because game maker studio this thing just rips uh graphics it has them uh they they look like something out of mother and controls yeah you gotta use that uh you gotta use the uh arrow keys um under linux uh if you're gonna if you want to use the controller under linux you're gonna probably need to use steam overlay which i didn't feel like configuring so i just rocked and rolled with the uh keyboard and mouse i'll get a chair for that because yeah, like like Vin said, you have to kind of go out of your way under Linux to like not have controller support. So yep. yeah, yeah, and we've seen um, Game Maker Studios in the past that actually have it. But yeah, over here on Solus Four, no point anything anymore uh, with the Ryzen sixteen hundred and the GTX ten eighty. Yeah, it launches the teeny tiny little window in the middle of the 4k uh uhd screen and yeah the frame rate seems to be locked at 30 the graphics it it's it's hipster pixel yeah uh yeah there's no controller support uh you can use the steam overlay if you enable steam input for your controller of choice or if you're using the steam controller it just 
works with that. But you have to set it with the for to emulate uh, mouse and keyboard. Otherwise, you're not using a controller at all. So as far as I'm concerned, it gets three chairs. Yep. Like I said, give, you got you got to kind of go out of your way to not support controllers under Linux, and you'll but, get but dinged Jordan, it's, it's a buttons <laughs> thing that you can manually configure like it's fucking 1995. Is the thing? Wait, it's not 1995. Dun, Good, dun, I don't have to go anymore. I don't, I, don't, I don't have to go to a grade six class tomorrow. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> ben, did you have fun? Oh on man, Nautil? did I? Uh, it was amazing. Uh, short and sweet with this. This is for me, Alex Kidd in Pokemon World, directed by Tim Schafer. 100%. Admittedly, <laughs> I, I was only curious about this game because OMG hype when it came out. People would not shut up about it. I gave it an hour to grab me. Spoilers, it didn't. It's not to say I don't get it. I get it, but there's nothing here that really interests me aside from Mr. Evil Flower Pants, the only character I personally found relatable. If you do like double fine humor, uh, turn-based combat mixed with a little bit of RNG and a dash of mind-numbingly simple puzzles, this might be your jam. Not my jam. Hashtag jam. <laughs> jam! Dun, yeah, dun, so dun. I, break it down. Uh, yeah, so I liked uh, Earthbound well enough. Uh, I played a bunch of it on an emulator because I was not going to pay $100 for an Earthbound Super Nintendo cart. Um, the buzz on release was that it was inspired by it, and I figured I'd give it a look then. And there it was! The fucking black mark on this game, Bullet Hell. Mind you, the Bullet Hell here isn't really that bad. It's just a big distraction to the other shit I could otherwise be enjoying, because I really just hate Bullet Hells. Um, it's got the cutesy, not really, it's sort of horrifying aesthetic down pat, and I could maybe enjoy the characters um, if I wasn't constantly dreading having to dodge projectiles over and over and over again. Um, the puzzles uh, are very much a Pokemon level of challenging. They're aimed at, you know, children. Um, and that's not really where the meat of the game is. The meat of the game is the interactions you can do. Uh, and I, I just want to take a moment to recognize it. Um, this is sort of like a carryover rant from tabletop RPGs, but I think it's worth addressing and it's worth recognizing when it's done well. Um, in games, um, usually when it comes to like combat, it tends to be the most mechanically defined subsystem within the game. And so that becomes the thing that you use to solve most of your problems because it is the thing that you understand the best. A lot of games don't do that for social interaction. They'll either give you a... Um, They'll either give you like a, a list of things or they'll just, uh, and you just got to pick one and hope that you go through the right, choose your own adventure path. Or, um, or you are not given the option to select your dialogue and you're just kind of railroaded through the plot. Uh, the fact that, uh, it adds a social interaction element to the, uh, to the combat itself is noteworthy. Uh, and I would like to see more games do this, uh, just because it's not something that's done a lot. And I think you can get away with some cool stuff with it. Um, yeah. Uh, beyond beyond that, uh, I, I you can you can go through this game murdering everyone or not killing everyone. I decided to take the Thanos approach, where fifty percent of the people I'm nice to, and then I just indiscriminately murder the other fifty percent because I'm chaotic neutral, and that's just how I roll. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's about it. I for 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 what it is, I can I can definitely see that I could enjoy parts of it, but considering the meat of the combat is just dodging shit, I I I, I can't two chairs <laughs> yeah the internet was ablaze a few years back it was 2015 paris suffered multiple terrorist attacks ireland became the first country to legalize same-sex marriage by popular vote and spacex landed the falcon 9 for the first time safely plenty of world happenings that year over on the uh, video game industry side of things a hipster pixel zelda-like built-in game maker studio one game of the year from several different publications and promptly cleaved the quote-unquote gamers into two very vocal minorities and a much larger group of people who it really said, don't care. Don't move, Pedro. <laughs> How did you... I, I wasn't paying attention. Um, uh, but yeah, it's uh, I'm very much in the camp of I don't give a damn. Uh, he... Undertale does a very good job of subver subverting expectations from what you would, you know, expect from a game like this. Uh, when you get down and dirty, you see that that subversion is just basically instead of just going in and killing everything, you have the chance of conversing with everything if you'd like. Uh, it's a simple game 
which will give you radically different views and radically different endings depending on how you choose to play it. It's a twist that was done very well and they didn't actually remove your ability to go in and just outright murder everything if you'd like to. I see what they did and I see what it does and it does it very well. But I don't... I don't really care and I didn't really like Zelda all that much either. So, two chairs. This game has very little to do with Zelda, but okay. Um... <laughs> yeah, that 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 about uh, does it. Do you have any th final thoughts on Undertale before we get out of here? Man, I could absolutely. Like, I would not think negative of anybody who really liked this game. It's really well done. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there. I just didn't hook into it. I wanted to hook into it. I don't know why it didn't. It is written well. Uh, it looks like there's quite a bit of game here, a lot to play, as Jordan pointed out, there's a gang of different endings and stuff like that. But, yeah, mm, if you get it on sale, pick it up, M maybe it'll be your gem. Yeah, yeah. it's a perfectly it, it, adequate game, but the most interesting thing about it was everything that was happening around it because of it. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a perfectly well done, comp uh, competently done game. Um, there is a reason that it was very well received, and if you don't like it, you're bad and wrong and sick, and you should just kill yourself. Of course not. <laughs> you, you can have differing opinions. No, you can't. It's not allowed. Not on Linux. <laughs> is this is the coming, internet? <laughs> coming up next, this person really wanted to get our attention, and they did. Plenty of chances to cock it up yet. Hello! and welcome to the hate mail so if you'd like to point out something well, why do you that we always got say wrong? hello do you do think people leave <laughs> they don't really leave pedro we record this all at one time <laughs> really I, Look, when, when, don't, whenever don't break i close my, my head, eyes Kenan. you all disappear right like you don't you stop existing yes. until i open my eyes again we, I, I just imagine it's like the towel <laughs> trick with the dog it's like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's the hate mail. It's uh, that time where you get to point out the things we said that were wrong, or you want to call us all assholes. I mean, we've had that before, but you can do it too. It's fine. Just go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, make sure to pick LGC Weekly from the multitude of available choices, and, you know, maybe you'll get to see Stallman eat foot pickings. Um... If you're a game developer, do make sure to include at least three keys uh, or a build that we can share amongst all of us. Otherwise, not only will we not talk about your game, we will mock you relentlessly. So, this week we have Vanessa. Got a big uh, one. Vanessa. Just one. Say. Yeah. A long one. <laughs> Vanessa. So we, we apparently <laughs> talked about mind tests. I was like, did we? And I was like, oh. Yeah, Final we'll mind test. Yes. <laughs> we fucking mentioned it for a second, but we didn't. <laughs> so, they write in. Um, paraphrase, just to let you know, Final Mind Test is just a dumbass fork run by a hostile third party, rah, rah, rabble, rabble. That third party, rah, 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 against rah. Something about bugs are fixed, uh, fork, I don't know. I highly recommend you avoid any and all contact with that project and anyone who supports it or its maintainer, the real mind test is and always will be at mindtest.net as far as I know. So, um, I would like to thank you for your comment on YouTube, uh, the comment on linuxgamecastweekly.com, and <laughs> this that was sent in through the contact form. Um, <laughs> Covering made, made, all made, your bases is good. Made, made sure we get it. If you really want to be on the show, if, if listen, if you really want us to read your hate mail, Patreon. Patreon. I, if, if you give us money, we will say whatever I, I actually checked outside for a carrier pigeon. <laughs> yeah, just like an owl collides into your, your window we never at this know, point. Man. Um, With like a flash drive dangling. <laughs> I, I would like to throw this out here. Just, just a bit of marketing advice. Because if you tell anyone to, and I quote, avoid any and all contact with that project and anyone who support it, that's what support did. The first, and I do mean first thing I'm going to do, is go look up said project. I mean, mm -hmm. are you fucking kidding me? I was like, well, shit, what's this cool stuff about? Gotta go do that. 
in, you know, seriously, that's like half of our audience. It's like, don't listen to that show. They're horrible. And they say weird things and make poop jokes. And they're not gaming professionals. And they don't take themselves. You're making fun of clowns. We're clowns. You laugh at a clown. Who's the real asshole? Um, you. Or actually, the clown. Right. The, clown, the clown is the asshole. <laughs> Clowns are assholes. I would always go Hi, check Pennywise. out that project, except in the case of open source Minecraft clones, because, you know, out of the seven, possibly 11 people playing, no one cares. Oh my God. Uh, however, I'd like to thank you for sharing with us that drama can exist in any project, no matter the size. And I'm not, I'm not making light of that. Um, it's like a beef thing. Just okay. Everybody can do this you know, thing. I'm just glad that someone finally explained what the hell a final mind test was and why it was different than regular <laughs> mind test. Because to the outside observers, <laughs> us going, yeah, oh, it's, yeah it's because we got one. that bit of hate mail about final mind tests. It's like, oh, you should use this. This is final mind test. This is what mind test 5.0 should be. It's like, okay, but why is it different than mind test? Why why is this a fork? And now, apparently, it's because there was a bug when they changed to version 5.0 that some of the features that were available were suddenly not available. And But yeah, apparently it was a bug and it was fixed and those features were added back. So yeah, it was all a big brouhaha for not much of anything at all. I'm getting a bit of a the people's front of Judea, Judea and people's front type vibe from this. It's almost dead. <laughs> it really feels like the micro Windows 7 users are angry at the Windows 10 users. It's like no one's winning here. Um, I mean, I mean they are. The Windows 10 is around. winning now. <laughs> they have the higher share. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, if there's something like that, yeah, we had no idea. And then I really personally still don't use whatever you like the best and usually if one side resor <laughs> resorts to name calling that's probably not the side you want to back. see the, the the real thing you need to do if you want to play minecraft is you need to get yourself one of these can you figure it out oh <laughs> all right all right stop i out took of one of those nope. and i made yeah. it a steam bomb he gets muted uh out of curiosity jordan why the fuck do you have an xbox with an arm's reach uh, because I'm moving all the shit out of the den that I need to put into a box into this room. Oh, you got the mine box. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Mostly. The, yeah, the, what, what do you call it? The, the TVs, roommates, the, everything else in there is mine, so. Wrong song. <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're gonna go fight Dracula now. <sighs> you know what? <laughs> Cue the music. Because on that bombshell, the music has been cued. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I want to thank everybody for showing up for this train wreck. We pull it off in each and every week with your support. And thank you again for that. 345 times. Let's make 346 next week. YOLO, indeed. Uh, if you want to get a hold to me, I'm at Vince Stone on Twitter. That's where I hang out because G Plus is dead, man. Totally dead. We'll, we'll be in a few days or whatever. And I'm no, on man. Mastodon, mass.linuxgamecast.com. Man, it's it's gonna it's gonna be forever. Yeah, I think the next the next numeric sequence number episode is what episode um, would be episode five, six, seven, or whatever. I don't I don't even fucking know. Uh, you can find me four, making five, six. four five six. Yeah, maybe. Um. Anyways, you can find me making poor number choices at the Burning Fool on Twitter for two more days. Two more days. At plus Jordan Spung at Google Plus and at Projo at our Mastodon, Mastodon.linkskincast.com. Yeah, I guess you could go to Google Plus and try to find me. That's my name. Uh, I might make a post on the very last day and say, Toodles, bitch. Uh, but yeah, no, you want to find me, go to Twitter. That's at an accounted for the F O U R because someone already had the number four. So yeah, that that's me. That's where you can find me. They had the number four on one service like 15 years ago and he's rolled with it because that's Pedro. He is Toodles, bitch. <laughs> Toodles, should, should, bitch. Should, should, <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a new user called right. Unaccounted Five. <laughs> I ran into an Unaccounted Five once on Need for Speed World. 
They gave me shit because I took their usual name. <laughs> That's funny. Did you race them? Who won? Uh, I don't. I don't remember if we raced. So you lost. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's the thing. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, because you lost. You lost. I like that game. That you oh. lost. That. Mm -hmm. Yes, I like video games. I suck at. Seems legit. Sometimes. Lots of people. Do. <laughs> it's like I'm terrible at Dark Souls, but I like it. <laughs> Look are at those fuckos. Are you Mike gonna buy G the uh, new uh, Dark Souls in Feudal Japan? Sekiro! Oh, uh, no, I'm not Sekiro. paying full price for a game that's not on Linux when it's like, you know, 60% off or it's part of a humble bundle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe. <laughs> but I, I just want to know what happens when shadows die three times. <laughs> shadows die twice, Then you're baby. proper dead. <laughs> are, you, are you sure? Maybe, maybe you've just fallen victim to the murder bush. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag murder bush. Bye. Dying five. Five dudes. <laughs>